So here we go, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Meet the Oppo series, the show where I've got the lowdown on Town's next opponent, which of course is Oxford United away at the Kassam in League One. I'm joined once again by good old Liam Royce, the man who covers all things Oxford for the Oxford Mail. Liam, thanks very much for joining me, my friends. How's things since Boxing Day? Because it's a quick turnaround already. Yeah, you're right. That's been a quick turnaround. Um, yeah, good, good. All things here. I think off the pitch is where a lot of sort of attention is at the moment with the stadium and the uh, the big council meeting next week. But um, yeah, it's sort of flown by, hasn't it, the past sort of four or five weeks, if that. It was, yeah, as indeed. Um, it's, of course, it's got cold again, but I won't get into that because, you know, weather talking and all that. Um, but, you know, we a very good performance for town on Boxing Day against Oxford, a 3 0 win. Um, but let's recap for Oxford since that day. Um, not been too bad, you know, one or two defeats here and there, but, you know, a good good day out against Arsenal. Of course, a, a, you know, a losing effort in the end, but not a bad performance overall. Um, but last time out, a late winner to beat Fleetwood, um, beat Cholton to end 2022. Did lose on New Year's Day, of course, at home against, Ox- um, against Exeter, sorry. Um, but how would you recap so far since Boxing Day? Um, I think they reacted really well. Um, first for the Cholton game to sort of round, like say, round off 2022. Um, very, very good in that game. Um, Josh Murphy started that one um, and, and was very, very impressive. He only did 45 minutes before again, a bit of cramp. But, but otherwise... They were in complete control of that one, and it looked like the Oxford United team under Carl Robinson that we've sort of um, been, been accustomed to over the past few years. You know, been a side in and around the top six for the last three or four years. Um, so yeah, that that was that was a very good result and very good performance. And then they sort of followed that up with another home game on New Year's Day against Exeter City. That was the opposite, really. Again, it was quite. It was a sort of timid display um never really sort of had a too much of a goal threat and, and it showed they were punished and, and, and they lost one nil um then that sort of leads into like I say the Arsenal game which you know was always going to be a bit of a free hit uh, but held held them off for an hour and it was it was the front three of that started against Newcastle in the previous game so Saka um, and Ketia and Martinelli um and and they handled them very well they were you know, resolute at the back without having much of a punch sort of going forward. But, you know, I think once once they got the first goal, Arsenal, a um, bit of mo- moment of magic with a sort of free kick swung in, and then he heads in, you know, th- they were always going to sort of show their class. And I think they got three in sort of 13 minutes to sort of seal that one off. But, th- you know, they did themselves no harm under the sort of the TV lights and the, um, the worldwide audience. And then obviously that leads into the last game, uh, Fleetwood, which um, yeah, Robinson said himself, they didn't deserve anything out of it. They were second best, but they scrapped and scraped and got a, a late winner to to you know to leave what was a very wet, wild and windy Lancashire with um, with three points. So they should be in sort of good spirits because they've not really had that this season. There've, there's been too many games where they've. Um, Played pretty well and then not took anything. So to actually be the opposite, not play well and, and get the three points is possibly a good sign. Yeah, definitely. To go all that way and to score a late winner, that's, that's fantastic. I'm sure Oxford fans were leaving Fleetwood very happy indeed. And as you mentioned already, the mood is very different now from maybe a few months ago. What would you say um, the change of that? Is it just, you know, because they're running the cup as well and just, you know, some good results on the road? Yeah, I suppose, um, you know, the mood's been a bit up and down all season anyway. Um, I don't think we've got to the point where the season's a write-off. They are still only eight points outside the top six. Um, you know, what what they need to do now is back up Fleetwood with a run of two, three, four wins. Um, if, they, if they, you know, to really actually make a go of the top six this season. So... Yeah, it's hard to sort of put your finger on 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 where um, where the sort of feeling is with the with the club among fans because you know you know for, there's obviously unrest because they're probably not as high as or as close to the playoffs as where a lot of fans would want them to be and I think everyone even at the club admits that but 
we're ultimately we're only just past the halfway point aren't we so there is still you know a lot of time still to to like i say get that run of wins that, that realistically that's what they need to do put that run together yeah, definitely. Not, not, not until you, you play us and then you can go on the run. You can, you can indeed. But um, let's talk about transfer business then. The drain transfer window mm. is open. Town have not been, they've been mucking about. They haven't been mucking about. They've been able to make some really good signings. But um, Oxford United, um, what, what's been going on so far? Well, three faces in the door, three defenders, um, probably all quite low profile, um, if that's fair to say. Um, I think the first one was agreed in December anyway. Um, Stefan Negru, he's a 20-year-old centre-back who's come over from Ireland, so a path which um, United have used in the past a lot. Um, he'll sort of, I suppose, in that Luke McNally mould. Um, obviously, he joined Burnley in, in the summer, hasn't sort of played too much for them under company. But, um, yeah, so we sort of won. I think he was on the bench against Arsenal. That's the only time he's been in a match day squad, um, obviously, because you get the extra sort of players on the bench with the FA Cup. He may sort of be involved, I guess, towards the end of the season. That might be the thing, you know, get him up to speed in training over the next few months and then from there. And that'll sort of be the same with the third sign in they made, which is Teddy Umphony. He's an um, 18-year-old centre-back, actually come from Warrington. Um, so, again, we don't, re- I don't really expect either of them to be around the first team um, this season, um, it'll be all, all eyes on next season, I imagine. The one who will possibly be involved or will will play a part this year is um, Brandon Fleming, left back on loan from Hull. Um, I think, you know, he's de- certainly into sort of rival Kieran Brown, um, you know, in that sort of left back slot. Um, he, I think, ended the year with Hull last season very well. Um, was I think their player of the month a couple of times, made the sort of championship team of the week a few times. Um, I think he got an injury though in the summer, then that puts him back. New manager comes in, same old, same old, you know, just needs to get out, get playing games. Um, and if he can do that here, he, you know, he, he looks certainly like there's a you know, decent player in there, at least as competition for, for, for Brown. Yeah, definitely. You always want that competition, healthy competition. Um, let's bring up the last 11 against Fleet with the 2-1 the win up there. And looks very different. You know, a lot of different changes from the game of Boxing Day. Of course, McGinty was was it making his debut when he played against us and conceding three goals in the greatest game. Um, but what sort of team do you reckon you could see play against town? You know, I think many changes there. No Matty Taylor starting there, but you were saying about Dondonka, you know, a young you know striker. Will he play two games in a row? Well, he he has done in the past, literally this season, with with um, when Matty Taylor was um, suspended for a few games. Um, but otherwise, yeah, Eastwood's back in place of McGinty. Like I say, it was his league debut um, at Portman Road, and you know, I think arguably very much at fault for that first goal, and was quite sort of nervy. But he did did get better over the next few games after that. Especially, I think it was against Exeter, made some really good saves to um, to keep it at nil nil. Um, wasn't really at fault for the goal anyway, but um, so yeah, Eastwood's number one, he'll be back. I don't see the back four changing, I think that is very much the you know preferred four now from for Robinson. Um, and again, same with the midfield three, I think they're looking very, very strong. Um, sort of nice mix. McGuane is this sort of holder now, and then you've got you know the technical ability of, of Bate and Brannigan. Um, Bate has been sort of playing very well and sort of getting rave reviews. So you don't really see any of that eight there. So it changes to, it's the forward line, which is up for debate. And it's the forward line, which has been the sort of problem all season, you know, that final third um, quality and um, an end product. I, I would guess that Murphy will keep his spot just because he's probably ahead of Wiltshire in terms of um, fitness um, you know, getting back to playing 90 minutes. Um, I would guess Billy Bodin would replace Wiltshire. He, you know, has got um, a good handful of goals this season um, and sort of is definitely more of an end product player um, in terms of output. And then, yeah, that, the big call will we'll be up front. I think, you know, Matty Taylor has um, been one of the top strikers in the league for the past two, three seasons. But this season, I think, what's he on, sort of seven in, in all comps, maybe. It's 
not the Matty Taylor that we're that we're used to. And you know, I think we spoke last time about this. There's a couple of reasons for that. It's a as I've touched upon, final third, he's not getting that that service, and B is he's getting frustrated about that and dropping deep. And we know that that's not his game. He's a he's a fox in the box, plays between the posts, and will you know will put him away when he gets a chance. So Odonka, yeah, um, eighteen years old, has scored a couple of goals already for the first team. Scored against Cholton actually in the three-one win. He really does himself no harm every time he plays. You know, he's got that horrible thing for centre backs where he'll 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 do everything you know he'll 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 run the channels he'll you know give a physical fight he's looks like week by week he seems to be getting bigger and stronger so it's it's a big call it's a big call but um i don't see any reason he's he's not done himself any harm that that's i think the main thing and you know He's a, he's a presence and sort of if he's going to get better, he's going it'll be game time. I, I don't I don't see it alone happening. I think he's, he's certainly now here for first team football. We shall wait and see. Then we shall watch him on Saturday if he does start or at least feature. Um, let's talk about the game as a whole. Then Liam, um, it's going to be a very different game to when we played in April um, last year because it was a lovely day. Lovely day. Of course, it's got the temperatures dropped a little bit. It's going to be very cold. I'm sure the town fans in that end. Of course, you've got the, the end behind the goal, uh, which is just a car park. Um, <laughs> but what game should we expect? Because Sam has it been a, a fortress this year. You know, it's been a mixed bag of results I've, I've seen really. Um, but is there, is there much difference to how Oxford play when they're at home? They don't tend to change their style, whether they're home or away. I think that the the idea and the, the um, philosophy is always, you know, keep possession of the ball um, and work through the thirds. Um, it, it's not coming off as regularly as, as you would like, but that, that is the way that they want to play. Um yeah, you say home form hasn't been, but well, it's been way off, way off the mark. Um, they've been, they've looked a better team on the road than they have at home. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, they'll they'll go into it. They won't change any, you know, anything just because they're playing Ipswich. Um, they'll they'll want to go into it and, and try and play the way. Um, it, you know, I think they they need. Maybe like that they had for the Arsenal game. It was a packed out crowd, and um, you know, and although, like you say, it's three stands, and you know, the the noise can evaporate very quickly there. The, you know, the, if they can get an atmosphere going and, and get behind um, the players, then it, the, the Kasam is, you know, it can be something of a fortress. And it has been in the past over the last few years. It's you know just another one of those things this season that just hasn't come off that home record. No, um, but I always enjoy my trips to Oxford. It's it's not too far away, um, and yeah, not, sometimes they've not been the greatest games, but it's a nice little trip to the Kassam. Um, but let's talk then. How you feeling, Liam, going into this game? You know, off of the you know last time you played Town, you know, three nil um, defeat for Oxford. Um, but you know that doesn't mean anything. Sometimes you go into this game as a fresh approach. How you feeling, and what do you what what do you reckon will happen? Um, I think. Quite mistakenly, I said that it could have been a draw at Portman Road because we were on the back of that unbeaten run, which obviously then came to an end. Um, but then Ipswich, I suppose, themselves haven't, I think since the the Boxing Day win for them, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think of one since in the league. Um, only, no, we haven't, no. It's been only the FA Cup, wasn't it, I think? Um, which wasn't a bad win, though. Um, so... It's a funny one. I think, you know, you wouldn't expect Ipswich to go on much more of a run without winning. Um, but, like I said, Oxford have, through the past few months, still looked quite, um, quite sort of strong and resolute at the back and sort of a, a difficult team to, to break down at times. So, if I was to sort of be bold again, maybe maybe another draw, which again um, would probably fit the recent historical record between the two, um, you know. And I'm sure Hughes fans would take that, and I'm sure they'd take the result from last year with a, um, I think was it it was very late, wasn't it? It was nine yes. fifth minute. So um, yeah, it's 
an entertaining two two would be would probably suit us and well, I don't know if it would suit you guys as much, but especially with maybe Wednesday's form and, and whatnot. But um yeah, a two two draw. I'll take a 2-2 two, two draw because at first I thought you were going to say nil-nil and of course that is the, the, the scoreline of choice when these two sides meet but um, we don't want that. Even if it's an entertaining nil-nil draw you still want to see some goals and yeah, that was a late, that was a killer blow. That sort that was pretty much the, the moment that killed that season um, because yeah, we were still in possible we're getting the playoffs but it wasn't going to happen in the end but um 2-2 two, two, i don't know if i'll be happy with that um because yeah it's it's gonna it be another bump in the road and we'll be called the draw specialist because uh, yeah as you said we haven't won a game since the oxford game of course in the fa cup but there's all been draws since then um but liam it's been a pleasure my friend thanks for joining me any other business anything else we should mention um as i said everyone wrap up warm because it's going to be a cold day at the Kassam, i'm sure yeah been a bit chilly here recently but i guess like it has been everywhere, really. Um, hopefully not as wet and wild, like I said, as it was at Fleetwood, because that was, um, we had 45 mile an hour gusts there. So uh, we're not expecting that at the Kassam on Saturday. Um, like I touched on earlier, really, it's just, there seems to be a lot of, it's off the field at the moment where all the excitement and that's where arguably there'll be more attention on a, on a council meeting next week than there may well be on the game against Ipswich, because that meeting will... Um, you know, be the next step in this search for a new stadium. So, um, yeah, it's that's where a lot of the focus and attention is, um, especially with the season panning out the way it is. So, so yeah, that that's that's where a lot of that is going. Well, best of luck with that. And um, any Oxford fans um, watching this, I hope you do get a new stadium. The Kassam is not bad, but um, I think everyone knows that behind the goal, it's always a weird one, car park and everything. But that's a story that's been, been spoken about loads many times. But Liam, thanks for joining me. Thanks, everyone, for watching another edition of Meet the Oppo. I mean, if you're going to the game, enjoy. If you're not, follow the game with us. And, of course, follow the game with Oxford Mail as well if you want the insight and the lowdown from the opposition. Um, and we'll be back for another edition very soon. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>